So my name is uh, Francis Serrano, our guru. I, I guess that's my, my official title. I own and operate Filipino Martial Arts School. I did that because it's easier to Google. Uh, Filipino Martial Arts, I'm a, it's a subsidiary of Design Legacy Association, but I'm also now known as Big Boy Screamador. So um, I've been practicing since 1998 and been teaching since 2008. I was born at a very young age in Manila, Makati, Manila. But w back then I was, I was a premature baby. So I was born two months early. You know, my mom described me when I was a newborn, I looked like, you know, Benjamin Button. Like, re she's like, he was the ugliest baby. And I'm like, thanks mom, you know? <laughs> that, that warm, loving, motherly feeling, right? But I was a very sickly kid. So I would be in the hospital for a few weeks, then I'll be out for a few days, and I'll be back in the hospital for a few more weeks again. So I wasn't allowed to go outside too much. I wasn't allowed to exert myself too much because of that. When we moved to the United States when I was nine years old, you know, I got a lot healthier. We lived in Los Angeles and we, we lived there for a few years and then we moved to Orange County where that's where most of my, uh, my growing up was. And it was in Orange County. I've always wanted to do martial arts, but my father was a complete pacifist. He said, no, I'm not, you, no, no martial arts for you. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that he equates every martial arts to the Japanese people. And the Japanese during World War II burned my grandfather alive in front of him. So just he just was not, he, he saw the darkest of violence as an 11 year old kid. So he just did not want that for his son. But I've always wanted to learn martial arts, but he's my dad, he said, no, there's nothing I can do about it, right? Uh, he died when I was 16. And so at that point, I, I guess I could have started martial arts at that point, but I didn't. I still waited until I was 18. And I, but so I wanted to respect his wishes for me. Even if he was still alive, I still I would have waited till I was 18. But that worked out in my favor. Because before that, before I turned 18, I didn't know FMA existed. I, you know, I, I fell in love with martial arts because he's a karate kid. But um, but that's, that's all, as far as martial arts is concerned, that's all I knew. The, the karates, the taekwondos, the kung fus, right? The, the, base, the base, you know, the most popular ones, right? Um, but because I waited till I was 18, that's when I had a chance to actually hear about Filipino martial arts extrema, right? So that's when I started doing research, and you know, this was the days before Google was invented. When I found it, I, I found where I belong. Filipino martial arts, so in 1998, I was introduced to Guru Henry Kabilian, and to this day, he's still my teacher. I'm still with the same group of people, and because and the, they're, they're not just my, my instructor, they're my family. Yeah, Filipino martial arts was my first and only martial arts that I've ever practiced and never really saw the need to go anywhere else. So when I'm coming in, whoops. You notice that when I'm stepping So in 2007, See? Master Sunny Napio, uh, the head of Design Legacy, decided to branch out on his own. And in two, so in 2007, Master Sunny founded it and he asked a group of his top students to, to ask him to join and there was no hesitation in all our parts. We said yes, we will join, right? So technically I'm one of the founders of the Sign Legacy, right? But then when I opened up Filipino Martial Arts School and they saw my logo, right? Master Sun, you know, a lot of people are like, are you leaving at VLA? I'm like, I'm not leaving. The Sign Legacy is my home. Right? And they're like, then why are you rocking Filipino martial arts school? It is 100% because of marketing only. Right? So, I mean, I rock Visayan Legacy. I am Visayan Legacy, right? But when people see the Visayan Legacy, they start talking to me in Visaya. I'm like, I'm like, whoa, stop. I'm like, I'm Tagalog, right? Because, because the name Visayan Legacy, in fairness, does not really say anything about Filipino martial arts. Now, I love the name Visayan Legacy. It was actually Chief Master Sunny's brother, who was my teacher, uh, Chief Joe. He had a t-shirt company called Visayan Legacy, but he passed away in 2004. So when Master Sunny, uh, you know, he said that he always wanted, him and his brother always wanted to break out, but now he couldn't do it because he's gone. Master Sunny called his school Visayan Legacy in honor of his brother. Cover, cover your face.
Well, it's our ability to do fireballs and, and you know, and, and, and jump through roofs. Um, no, um, I think what makes Visayan Legacy very different is because Master Sunny, and I'm not saying we're the only ones to do this, obviously, but Master Sunny is very, very open to collaborating with other systems. And he's like, yeah, go try it. If you know you like it, go for it, right? Um, but I think what makes Visayan Legacy really special is that we're a very small school. In FMA school, there's one teacher and 10 students. So the ratio is 10 to one, right? When I was a student, the ratio was uh, four to one, right? And people think, oh, one teacher, one teacher, four students. No, no, it was four teacher, one student. So training, they were very, very like, they were very, very like nitpicky about everything. Your left middle toe is off alignment. How can you even see that through my shoe, <laughs> right? But yeah, it was a very, it's a very attention to detail that that, that uh, my teachers had. And because I was the only student many of the times when I was still a student, they gave me a lot of details kind of thing. But I think also is that they make you feel like you belong there. You know, I mean, I could talk about the techniques and how great it is and whatnot. And I could talk about, about how even though this side legacy is very small, there's they, each branch has at least two world champions. FMA school has three. I could talk about that all day, but that's not really the strength of VLA. The strength of VLA is the familiness and, and then that it makes you feel welcome. And the moment, the moment you put on the VLA colors, you're, you're family. And I've always, I've always been treated like family uh, by, by everybody in VLA more than a lot of members, a lot of times my, my own family. So I think if you want to know what's, what's a special sauce of VLA, Obviously, the techniques, the training, the, the 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 curriculum is great, but what's greater is the the family connection that you create with it. Visayan Legacy, because predominantly is a dosipars multi-style system, covers a lot of those you know a lot of those things like single stick, double stick, bankao, which is Master Sunny's family style of martial arts, you know, Espada Daga, San Miguel, you know, not the beer. Um, which I call the drunken style. <laughs> so, um, uh, San Miguel Esprima, Cacoy Doce Paris, the, the modified corto, then the, the corto corbada, the dumogs, the scritos, that, you know, the, the, they, would, they would accomplish all those things. It's, it's all encompassed in that. They're trying to fit entire oceans worth of information in my tiny little brain. You know, so, but yeah, we, we, we cover a lot of those things, so. One of the basic techniques that we teach in my system is called the planta. In 2008, I, I, I decided to, that my life needed a big change. So I moved back to the Philippines to start to go to college for the first time, like to, to get my bachelor's degree and then eventually get my master's in divinity, so to go to seminary school. One of the reasons why it so excited me to move to the Philippines was I get to train FMA in the Nanay land, in the motherland, right? So I'm like, oh, this is, oh, this is so gonna be so awesome, right? So I contacted Supreme Grandmaster Dioni Cañete, that's when I was still with Dose Pars, uh, we're still affiliated with Dose Pars Multi-Style System. I said, uh, sir, uh, I'm looking for an instructor here in Manila, do you know of anybody? Oh yeah, there's uh, only one. The, that's uh, the multi-style, and I, I just remember distinctively that's how he, he spoke to me, right? There's only one that teaches the multi-style in uh, Manila. And I'm like, awesome, sir. Tell me who this person is and where this person, I'll go right now. Oh yeah, that's you. What? Yeah, you teach, you teach. Wait, one, one more time. Yeah, you teach, you can do it. Okay, talk to you later. <laughs> And then I, I remember emailing Master Sunny, the head of, his, of our school, beside Legacy. I'm like, uh, sir, I talked to Dioni and he said that I should teach. And then so Master Sunny goes, okay, then I guess you're teaching. Okay. So that was the birth of Filipino martial arts school. Um, and then I remember I was talking to one of my closest friends with the marketing background. We understood, I understood right away that I have to build a website because that's every, all the information should flow to your website, right? And we, so now the question is, what's the domain name? Now, the most important thing, and you know, for those who are looking for domain names, you don't want to have a really long domain name, like abracadabrasisbumba.com. So we were coming up, we were trying to look up for different domain, like FMA in the city, FMA in Manila, 
But the question, the problem is, what if I don't live in Manila anymore? I can't use that domain name anymore, right? And then just for a whim, my friend Aaron Googled, uh, you know, checked the domain registry to FMA school, and it was available. So we jumped on it right away. So now that's where FMA School, the name FMA School was born. And and then the, the official name of the company is Filipino Martial Arts School. So now even today when people Google Fil Filipino Martial Arts School, regardless of where you are, I'm in one of the top pages. So people find me really easily. And that's how Filipino Martial Arts School was born. One of the things I'm very proud of um, this past during the past during the pandemic is that I lost over 100 pounds, and so my energy has doubled. I'm, I'm moving a lot more now, and my students are noticing that. They're, they're, they, they, the students that have been with me for many many years notice that there's a big, huge paradigm shift in my energy. I am highly encouraged now. To, to go out there, especially by Kuya Doug Marcada, right, Marcada, and he's like, you know, Francis, go out there, go out there, right? And I'm like, you know what, he's right. If like, when am I gonna do this? When I'm like old and decrepit? Or now when I'm in the healthiest point in my life? So short term goal is to go to as many, as many cities in 2022 as possible to do Filipino martial arts. Um, Midterm goal with me and my students, I want to connect more of the cultural aspect to FMA. So one of our hopes and wishes, and it's of course depending upon um, COVID and the restrictions, is to go back to the Philippines and train with, with the Filipino masters and grandmasters. And then all my students will go back home. I'll stay another couple of weeks and then I'm gonna be looking for instructors that are just, they're not that well known, but are just respected within the community. And I'll go film them and train with them for a while, right? And then talk about their history and, and how they came about with FMA. So that's the mid-range goal. And as far as long-term goal is concerned, um, it's, you know, from a business standpoint, you have to duplicate yourself, right? You have to duplicate yourself. And one of the hardest things about with the martial arts and the, the duplication of it is that who are you going to put there to, to be the instructor of that school, right? Because you can't just pick up a guy, a guy off the street, okay, start teaching FMA, right? It takes time for you to cultivate that person to become a martial arts, a martial arts, martial artist, to be, and then just because they're a good martial doesn't mean necessarily mean they're good, uh, good instructors. So it's it's that hard thing. So one of one of the goals here is how am I going to duplicate myself? And you know, there's things that are in the works right now uh, in how to do that, right? But yeah, so it's it's branching out. That's the long term goal. You don't fight their fight. When I first opened up FMA school in California, uh, when I moved back from the Philippines, I didn't know how I was gonna, I was kind of struggling. And a good friend of mine from Pacamod, Chris Paragas, said, brother, just, just be patient. And Chris, you're absolutely right. I, and you know, I told you this to your face, but I'm telling it to the entire world. You were right. Um, so the, one of the struggles was, was the logistics or the, the inner workings of Filipino martial arts school. The, you know, how do I maximize my time without diminishing the quality of FMA? So on a business level, that's always something that you're struggling with. The second business problem that I had is how many things can I do and how many things can I let go and do, let somebody else do? Now, obviously, the more things you do, the less you have to pay out, right? But there's only so many things that I can do. For me, was that it wasn't because I don't know how to do that, so I guess I'll, I'll just give it out to somebody else. That wasn't the answer. The answer was go learn how to do it. And if you learn how to do it and you still can't do it, then maybe consider. And so uh, I just learned. So that was what, that was the biggest struggle. So now I'm thinking I'm, I'm in a better place with that. From a personal level, my biggest struggle was that I, just like a lot of people have body image issues. Um, because I'm a big person, I, you know, um, a lot of people have criticized whether or not I'm a real Filipino martial artist or not. And for many times, I believed him. So in the earlier, my, my earlier FMA school career, you'll barely see any, any videos of me doing anything because it's just that body shaming was, was real. Um, in fact, and I knew that because in 2006, I was in National Geographic's uh, Science of Obesity documentary where I had the gastric bypass surgery. 
and then if you you know it's on YouTube and you read the comments it's it's just vile like some some guy accused me that the, I'm the reason why there's people starving people in Africa I get I, I, I got those like constantly and to say that it didn't affect me I'd be lying it affected me you know uh, Master Sunday described me as I'm the guy who puts his heart on the slave right the thing about me is I'm very passionate about it. If I decide to do something, I'm very passionate about it. But with passion comes emotion. And and so I'm passionate about something and I can be equally on the opposite side of the spectrum, be completely demoralized by that same thing. The personal struggle is how do I allow myself to be the face of FMA school? And so again, great people have supported me, encouraged me, you know, Doug Marqueda, uh, all my students said, you know, Guru, you're, you, you know what you're doing. You, your stuff is great. Show the world. And like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. But then Kui Doug reminded me of why I did that National Geographic show was because I was hoping to inspire somebody else to be able to, you know, get healthier. One of the things that made that, that documentary unique was because most of the time when they do these type of documentary about people getting you know overweight, they're usually a hermit. They're, they're a recluse. They're, they're in a basement they, they, because of the body shaming was so, so rampant in their life that they, they don't want to even go outside. But I was the guy that lived my life. I, I, was, I, I was dating. I was, I was hanging out with so many people, right? So they, put, they picked me to be in that documentary because they, I wasn't a guy that, wasn't, that was trying to get the surgery so I could start my life. I was the guy that wants to get the surgery so I could continue living my awesome life. But because of those 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 hateful comments, uh, you know, I, it was like a little, small little daggers in my heart, right? I stopped. And Koya Doug reminded me, no, you're doing this for the greater good, and and I do believe that my purpose in this life is to do is to help as many people as I can. And as much as people are still hating, there's a lot of people I'm actually helping now. Um, people will actually message me saying about how my son doesn't go out because of the body shaming. I showed him this video and he's feeling encouraged. And honestly, Jesse, all the ridicules, all the hates is canceled out by that one comment. Because if I can help one person, then it's totally worth it. I gotta stay focused on the positive. And now, that's why I do Anybody FMA. That's, the, that's my mission. Like, because it's about anybody can do Filipino martial arts, but any body type can do Fili Filipino martial arts. Because bottom line is, is that if I can do it, what's anybody else's excuse?